やな。Take a little morning stroll and check it out. There are some people camping over there. Oh, yeah. It's so nice to fill my lungs with that fresh ocean air. It's nice to be on vacation. <laughs> oh, the air smells so fresh here. <laughs> It's a it's a beech nut. <laughs> it's a beech nut and a walnut. <laughs> coconut, crab. coconut crab. It's not. <laughs> Those don't live here. It's day two of our trip and welcome here. Um, so we, a few years ago, there was a very famous, I think maybe it was trending on Twitter or YouTube or something, but um, this there's this incredibly steep bridge in Japan. It almost looks like it defies gravity. It's so steep. It looks like you're going like vertically up in the sky, depending on what angle you see it from. And we just realized that we happen to be right next door to it. So we're in Shimane Prefecture, but we're right on the border from Shimane to Totori Prefecture. And we thought we have to go and check this bridge out. And we thought we'd take you guys along and show you what it's like. So enjoy this drive over this incredibly steep gravity defying bridge with us. Okay, so you can kind of see the bridge here. Ooh, it's very arched. I mean, but it's pretty steep. Mm. But like, it's not as intense as like that one photo that we saw. Okay. 
Oops, as you can see, we've got like the bay here. Or what's this place called? Okay, so we're on this little island called Eishima. We just stopped at the family mart for a snack. And we're about to approach this bridge. It's just down this road here. I'm gonna keep the camera rolling. Hopefully you guys can see how insane this looks. We decided to change things up on our second day of our trip and took a coastal drive down to Mukibanda, an ancient village from the Yayoi Jidai dating back to around the 1st century AD. The Yayoi period started at the beginning of the Neolithic era in Japan and continued through the Bronze Age and near the end crossed into the Iron Age. During this period, Japan transitioned to a settled agricultural society, using farming methods that were introduced to the country initially in the Kyushu region from Korea. People of this time period made tools from stone and later iron, and had figured out how to make glass beadwork which they wore as adornments. They had begun to cultivate rice, but they also foraged for foods such as nuts, berries, and seasonal fruits, fish, and seafood, and certain games such as deer, wild boar, duck, and wild vegetables and mushrooms. One of the defining features of this era was the use of thatched roofs which flared out, called irimoya. Houses were in pit dwellings with a wooden frame which supported the roof. Storage warehouses, ceremonial buildings, as well as watchtowers were built above ground. Hey guys, so now we're at an ancient village called Mugibanda. So this is from the Yayoi Jidai. If you can see behind me here, they have some old structures. So this is like an archeological site and there's a lot of burial mounds, including keyhole shaped kofun, which is really cool. Of course, being from Nara, I'm very interested in that stuff. So uh, this was like an ancient settlement and now they've like uh, recreated some of the structures here. You can see, ooh, look at that, cool. 
So we're just here to check it out and see what uh, ancient life in the Yayoi Jidai was like for Japan. Ooh, is this really how it was? Oh, so they climbed up into there. Oh, I didn't know that. I don't think you can live there. It's like a, a meeting place or a workplace or something. Oh, oh, like a storage shed. Ooh. So like they would store. Oh, wow. So they would climb this little, like, look, this is, this is my foot. It's only like one foot big. <laughs> I guess they would probably have it up high to keep animals out, right? Like if they were storing grain. Yeah. Oh, it's pretty smart, actually. So it's like a barn. Okay, so they made this because they would store grain and food and things in here and then to keep mice out, um, they can't climb up that little tiny ladder. Oh, that's cool. I didn't really realize that before. I've seen pictures of these, but I never realized what it was exactly. Yeah, like if you look at these thatched roofs, so like they really used all parts of the plant of like, because this is like rice or some other wheat grain or maybe um, like soba or something. It's probably um, rice. Yeah. yeah, this is what you spent your life. Oh, cool. Wow. So this, these are like their storage barns. And then they lived in the ones over here or like they worked and stuff. These are like subterranean. They're built into the ground. Wow. I've seen way thicker ones too. This is this is kind of like thin. Yeah. You have to crouch down. Yeah, but I think people back then were way shorter too. Oh, there's like two levels in here. Wow. Check it out. Probably. Every year after they harvested the rice, they would dry it and then they would do this stuff with it. Thatch the re-thatch the roofs or patch them or whatever. Wow. And they have like a ventilation part up here in the loft. Oh, oh it's a window. Oh, the, there's a door on the other side. Oh, oh there's a door in there. Oh, there's a dandelion in there. <laughs> Ooh, oh, it's so hikui. <laughs> oh, weird. <laughs> oh, there's like fire equipment. Oh, it's so dark. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> I guess they would have a fire down there. And... Wow. <laughs> it can, it's really thick. It's kind of warm. Now we've seen this, I want to see like an Ainu village. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ine and kids are having so much fun just running around. <laughs> oh, this is really cool. I think this is, yeah, this is my first time ever seeing like a Yayoi period village. It's not that big. I mean, probably they didn't build as many buildings as there might have been, but yeah, people were living inside of these. Ooh, this is like an example of one under construction. Oh, it's pretty deep. They dig way down. <laughs> oh, you can climb down in there. Wow, they would have to climb down. Oh, and look, they would have a fire. Wow. Oh, it's pretty actually like solid. They must have used some sort of um, plaster to build this. And this is where they would grill that deer and fish. <laughs> Neat. Oh, this one has little stairs or steps reaching up to it. Yeah, maybe we just shut that. Oh. Ooh, it's so dark in here. I had no idea it was this dark. Yeah. Oh, 
here you can see what the foundation looks like before they put all of the, the grass and the thatching on top of it. So they start so they start with this frame and like this plaster or some sort of molded earth. And this one has a pit in it with like a little drain pipe or something. Was this their old bathroom? <laughs> It's an all of them. Is it all of them? I don't remember seeing it like that. It was so defined. No, no. It, I look over there and it's in there. Okay. Yeah. I wonder where they where they where their bathroom was. <laughs> or did they just go out in the forest? They probably had but like if everybody just randomly went out in the forest, like wouldn't that be like bad if <laughs> Yeah, I mean like somebody just walks into your pile of stuff. <laughs> they had to have like a designated bathroom area I bet mm. Muki Banda is thought to have been the central portion of a Yayoi settlement at the foot of Mount Dyson the ruins cover the entirety of Banda Hill extending from part of Yonago City into Daisencho in the Saihaku district at present as much as a tenth of the total area has been excavated revealing a number of important discoveries that have led experts to revise their conception of the Yayoi period. These include more than 420 pit dwellings and more than 500 huts built directly into the ground from the end of the middle period of the Yayoi, around 1st century, to the early Kofun period, which is 3rd century, as well as embedded barrow tombs with four-cornered projections. Visitors may watch the ongoing excavations up close. So wait, this this structure here like wasn't originally there. This like little line thing. They're just sectioning it off to dig out stuff. How do they know that it was there? <laughs> oh, okay. Now this makes more sense. これ oh. 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 So what do you think about seeing this ancient village? It's a nice experience because we learned uh, in the textbook but we never seen like a real one. Mm -hmm. I don't think in Nara we have this type of houses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't seen these buildings. There's yeah, Asuka Mura, Asuka, which yeah. is like a different type mm. of style, a different era. So, yeah, yeah it's really cool. Yeah. Actually, mm. they're pretty small. <laughs> yeah, like, how many uh, people are supposed to live in each one? I don't know. No. Like each family or something? Yeah. Yeah, wow. There's no explanation, but uh, the door is short. Yeah, it yeah. shows how short people were back then. Or it's supposed to be and they crouched down all the time. Yeah. I think it's both. I think they were short and they crouched down. <laughs> mm. Yeah. We should be here. It's nice yeah. to know. Yeah. I recommend any Japanese or other foreign visitors to visit this place. This is very cool and educational and interesting. A nice view. You can see yeah. the ocean. Yep. Other parts of Totori. This is Yonago City. I mean, yeah. Outside of Yonago City. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the Dyson is behind us. And you can see mm -hmm. the Mm, the volcanoes back there. So that was our visit to Mugi Panda. <laughs> they have a mascot called Mugi Panda and they have like a panda mascot, but there definitely were no pandas here back then. Uh, but anyway, yeah, as we were just saying, I think this is a really cool place. It's really cool to see these ancient villages and the ancient buildings, how they how people would have lived back then. And I totally recommend anybody who's a fan of history or interested in ancient cultures and how they lived to come and check this place out in Totoriken in Yonago City. <laughs> so we're gonna move on to our next activity today and there's some burial mounds and kofun in this park as well but it's about a 15 minute walk from here and because it's all wet I don't think we can take the kids hiking out there so we'll have to come back in the future when everyone's bigger maybe. Um, but yeah, so we'll probably do an onsen. There's lots of onsen around here today and just take it easy for the rest of the day today.
place. So we're right by the ocean and there's this really cool onsen hot spring which has um, family rooms that you can rent out and it's like a whole onsen that we can use as a family so it's not like a gender separated. So it's perfect for our family of four. So we're about to go in and we'll show you what the room looks like. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. よかった、空いてたな。空いてた。空いてた。空いてた。空いてた。空いてた。空いてた。空いてた。空いてた。空いてた。空いてた。空いてた。空いてた。空いてた。空いてた。空いてた。空いてた。空いてた。空いてた。
and um, I'm mostly just ordering cooked things. Just a little disclaimer. Ooh, stop. <laughs> What's that? Eat it. It's become tradition. Whenever we go to Kaiten Sushi, we always order fried potatoes for some reason. I don't know. Ketchup for Hoshi. He has like a red mouth. I've never seen one like that. I don't know if you can't see it well. Look at his red little lips. <laughs> you gotta do it really hard though. Make them? Oh, okay. No, it's fine. Look, it's coming down. Oh, come on, come on. Here. Oh, my favorite. Come in here, you go. Put it in your pocket. Yeah. Blue. What's that? Balloon. Blue. What balloon is that? Metamo. Metamo edgy balloon. Yeah. Hmm? Lele, what are you doing? Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Mm-hmm. <laughs>